Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ryan Mallory for SharePlanner.com. Today is December 20th, 2013. Or as my son would excitedly say, only five more days till Christmas. And, um, and as I would say, only four more days until Christmas Eve, which means that the market gives us, you know, a half, a half day off. And then on Christmas, of course, you know, you get to spend it with family and you don't have to worry about what the market's doing or anything else. You can just sit back and enjoy the moment with family. Of course, on Thursday and Friday, the markets are back to uh, full trading days. But man, take, take any extra days off where we can get them, you know. And uh, uh, overall, it's been a great year. Very thankful for this year. Um, and you know that the, the market's been you know up i think if this market finishes higher which is kind of looking that way in terms of uh on a month-to-month basis it looks like we're gonna have 10 up months on the s p and 12 down or two down months on the s p so for the broader market it's been a pretty good year and i think what you're starting to see in the s p right now particularly after wednesday use that early uh dip on the FOMC statement or the reaction to the FOMC statement that lasted literally like like seconds basically and then it got bought up and it just went you know 30 points higher on the S&P which is crazy right um but I think what you're seeing a lot right now is the is fund managers just chasing after this market they're saying look we're not going to beat the market but we got to try and save face so just you know pour it all along and let's just hope this market goes higher for the rest of the year you know that that's that's a horrible trading strategy I mean I I don't let the market dictate to me how I'm going to trade in terms of, you know, like if the market's up 10% on the month and I'm up 9%, I'm not going to say, well, I got to beat the market this month, so I'm going to go 100% in and going even into margin and try to, I'm, I'm going to trade based on what the market tells me to do, but I'm not going to let it uh, turn me into uh, like a panic mode or put me in a panic mode to where I feel like I have to chase after the same kind of performance day after day after day that the S&P does because sometimes the market's down, I'm up, market's up, I'm down. And I mean, as traders, we're always going to have losing days and, and that's fine. But the, the, the key to the market and to key or the key to trading is are you able to consistently profit off of the market? Are you able to manage the risk and consistently profit? Manage the risk consistently profit manage the risk and consistently profit if you don't manage the risk you will not consistently profit and man i've been sort of on a soapbox about that today on twitter and, and everything because i just see so many people that are obsessed with talking about how great their stock picks are and their services and success in the market has nothing to do with the stock picks somebody could tell me what trades to trade and i could beat them at trading simply because i'll more than likely manage the risk better than they will that's right i can let them choose the stocks that i would trade in and i would still probably beat them because i am managing the risk better than they are okay trading has everything to do with managing the risk if you don't get that get out of the market because you will never profit over the long term you're wild fascinations about becoming an ultra rich uber millionaire that's you know got three different vacation homes will never come to fruition if you can't manage the risk all right now i'm not trying to come down hard on you if, if you know for listening a lot of a lot of the people who who subscribe to the share pointer splash zone they they learn how to manage the risk or they come into it sometimes also learn knowing how to manage the risk and that's great because those are the kinds of traders that that we need to strive to be the ones that can put the risk above or managing the risk above the fascination with you know a thousand dollars here up a trade ten thousand here five thousand there a hundred dollars here a hundred dollars there that's, that has nothing to do with the success it's all about the risk Whew. I think I got that off my chest man <laughs> all right okay so like I said, let's let's look at the S and P. Let's look at some stocks. I'm going to talk about UA, a stock that I got out of yesterday. It's actually running right now since I got out of it, and, and I'm going to tell you why I'm okay with that. Okay. But first, S and P. We we talked just a little bit about it. I'll just say a couple more words about it, and it will be done. Before we were trading in this uh, bearish wedge. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can do this without messing up the charts. Okay. We were we were trading in a bearish wedge that was look something like that. And then we broke down and out of it, okay? And so 
folks were thinking, oh, we're going to sell off because we're breaking this key trend line and all that stuff. And the, and the thing is, is that we could have, okay, that could have led to a sell off, but it didn't. But the reason why is, is that sometimes the really steep trend lines do create bearish wedges naturally because they're constant, the dip is constantly getting bought up and they're not necessarily making like really heavy new highs in the market. But, uh, but when the st steep trend line is really steep like that it, and, and then it breaks, that's oftentimes more of like a flattening out of the trend line, right? Making it less steep, okay, like what we just did there, than it is really some bearish wedge that's marking a critical top in the market. And uh, the, the bearish wedges that you should really become concerned with are the ones that the bottom trend line is very f flat or, you know, slightly like less than 45 degrees, basically. Let's just use that as a rule of thumb. If it's less than 45 degrees and the market's creating a bullish wedge, or a bearish wedge, that's something to be nervous about. Okay. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead. And I, I talk about the S and P every day. I almost get tired of it, but um, you know, I just thought I'd give that couple of points. I, I'd like to get into the individual stocks because that is that's that's really where um, you know managing the trades come into key. I mean, you got to follow the markets and what the market's telling you, but then you also got to manage the risk on the individual trades. So UA. Let's let's look at UA. Let's see if I can pull this off without today's action. Okay. There we go. Perfect. All right. This is what I was faced with at the close of yesterday. I had to I had to really think long and hard about whether I was going to sell out. Now this is considered like an evening star uh, type of. Um, candle pattern here and so I was thinking that we would probably gap down lower tomorrow or at least open up a little bit lower and push thereafter I thought the sort of like what we did right right uh, here back on November 18th okay we, we were pushing higher then we formed this little doji and then we sold off hard the next day that was my my big fear you can see it's happened multiple times in the stock on 10 2 as well okay that's not a position, okay, and here is again, 1021, but that's not a position that I want to put myself in with, in, nor with my subscribers to where I'm setting you guys up for a higher chance at loss and knowingly doing so. So what did I do yesterday? I closed out of the trade. Now I realized too that when, by closing out of the trade, that might not happen and it might start pushing higher the following day. And if that happens, you got to be cool with that. You got to say, you know what, that's part of trading. Stocks, when you get out of them, guess what? They're going to go up and they're going to go down and they're going to do it whether you're in the stock or not. And since that's the only two things that a stock can do, up, down, and on the very rare occasion, you know, finish flat on the day, that it's going to happen where you get out of a stock and it pushes it up. But my, my job is not to always be in the stocks and long all the stocks that are going up and then get out of them before they go down. My job is to manage the risks so that when the trade's set up and when the, uh, the the valid trade is no longer valid, it's invalid, then I get out and that the, that the risk is too high to be in there at that moment or I get stopped out of my trades. So looking back even further, this particular candle here, it has reared its ugly head in the past. For instance, right here on 522, moving strongly higher, much stronger than what we were doing recently, okay? And then it got this candle. Now, a lot of people probably held on to that trade um, if, if you were long in it and said, oh, it's just going to keep on moving higher because, you know, it's already gone from 57 all the way up to 64. I'm long and strong. But guess what? It goes, that was the peak, and it goes all the way back down to 55. All right? And, you know, there's other instances of this too. I'm not going to spend too much time trying to find them, but um, here's another one. Okay. See how on 314, moving steadily higher, it gets that candle, boom. Okay, I don't, I don't want to hold a stock when it's doing that, okay? I want to walk away with gains. I want to walk away with money in my pocket, all right? And when you get that kind of a candle, that's not something that you want to hold through. So you get out of it. Another example right here, you get that little bearish candle pattern and then, you know, the, the fallout the next day. So what happens today? Well... It moves higher. And so the automatic notion is to think, I should never have sold out of that stock. What was I thinking? Well, based on the knowledge that you had the day prior, you didn't know what it was going to do the next day. Up, down, sideways. You did not know what 
it was going to do. As a result, you have to make a decision based on what you know and what the charts are telling you. And what the charts are telling us is that that is a bad candle and it's not worth holding any longer, so you get out. You're playing a set of probabilities, okay? You're not playing a set of probabilities that says you have to be 100% right. You're playing a set of probabilities that if you're 60% sure that the stock is going to go against you, then you need to get out, okay? And guess what? 40% chance? That's still a good chance that you might be wrong on that, okay? However, the odds are in your favor that you're going to be right and that you get out. And if you play those odds correctly time and time and time again, over the long term, you will consistently profit. So we will come out of UA with 1.5%. It's up 0.85% uh, right now. So we could have had 2.35%. And, and so there's, But there's no reason to really care about that because the stock is going to go up. It's going to go down after you get out of trade, and it doesn't matter. The thing is, is, did you manage the trade? Did you manage the risk? Did you manage the profits? Did you manage how to get in and how to get out? And did you do it with decision, with, with, with without emotion, without saying, oh man, if I would have just, if I hold on longer and, and it can bounce tomorrow, then I will make enough to buy myself a PlayStation 4 for my kid for Christmas. That's not the kind of decision making that you can afford to succumb to, that you can allow yourself to succumb to in the stock market, okay? Next trade, okay? I told traders to get into TRMB today. And I, with every every trade alert, I give them the stop loss. I give them the target. I give them the entry. I update them every time I move up my stop loss. I give them an explanation for the trade. And then we discuss it constantly throughout the, the trading day. Hey, you know, this stock, it's showing some good strength here. Hey, like for instance, right now we're in LVS, okay? LVS. Um, I don't like how this chart's behaving right here, okay? This is a perfect example. I I don't like how the fact that it's dipping below the 10 day moving average. If it gets below $76, I'm going to get a little bit, I'm going to get very uncomfortable in this stock. I'm kind of uncomfortable as it is in this stock. So there's a good chance I'm going to ax this one because I don't like the way in which it's behaving. Okay. And when it starts to show cracks underneath the surface, I don't want to hold on to it. It's uh, like that old saying, I don't want to be the, the Dutch boy who plugs his finger into the dam. That's not what I'm out here to do. I'm out here to get the profits when the profits are good. When the profits look shaky, I want to get out. So there you go. That's LVS. But on TRMB, got into it because the risk was good. If the risk isn't good, I don't care how likely the stock is to go up. The, the risk is not good, but I don't want to get into it. I, I plan for the improbable on trades. So TRMB, is there, and, and that's a reason why I don't get into biotechs all that much, especially low dollar bio caps like uh, ARNA or AMRN. I won't touch those because even though that you could have a big squeeze, like what, I think uh, AMRN is having a big squeeze today, right? Like 28%. Okay. I could have bought this, you know, yesterday at 160 or whatever, you know, it was trading at and, and then be pounding my chest. Woo, look at that. 28% in a day. Eat it, suckers, you know, and, and, and be like half of those, you know, amateurs out there on Twitter that are, you know, pumping their chest about, you know, a, a call that they got uh, right, fortunately, for themselves. And But then guess what? The, the, there's no way to manage that risk on that trade. There is no edge in Amarin at all. The, the thing that lures people is like, oh, it's might have bottomed and i'm going to try to see if it bottomed but i don't care about the risk because if i lose another 20 percent tomorrow you know i'll just be holding on long term then that is the dumbest way to trade folks what was what was i on trmb all right so i like this one though right because it's got a nice little break here of this following trend line so that's broken and then you also have a nice uh, consolidate or a, a break a price level breakout that it's clearly trading above and it's night consolidating around it very nicely so what guess what that means when you have a consolidation like that that means you can play this thing with some very tight risk so you can get in below or you put your stop loss below 3241 and the stock is only trading at 3328 we get in at 3315 like i did earlier this morning with subs and now you've got a trade that, man, if this thing goes up 7 8%, you're getting like 4 or 5 to 1 for what you risk on this trade. That is the beauty of successful trading. And guess what? If I'm wrong, I could care less because 
the profit, the, the, the loss is not that significant, okay? Because we're going to rip off trades that get, give us 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10% and yield 2, 3, 4 to 1 what we could have ever have taken in, in losses, okay? If you look at my past performance, right? My past performance says I have 35 or 40 trades this year, you know, or over the like last four or five months, okay? Just over the last four or five months, about 35 trades that have yielded an excess of of uh of my average stop loss okay that is pretty significant okay so if like my my actually it's more than more that more than that in my average stop loss it's like if you look at like a stop loss of 3.1 percent i have about 40 trades that have yielded higher gains than that over the last four or five months and but i've only had a trade that goes for you know between 3.1 and 4 percent seven times it took me a long time to get to that point there. So about seven times I've had about a stock loss, stop loss that goes, you know, between 3.1 and 4%. I think my, my worst trade on the year is like 5%, okay? Um, my best trade on the year, or, but the number of trades, like 35 to 40 trades over that same time period, that's more than that amount. Okay, in terms of like more than 3.1% in the positive. So that gives you an idea for how much risk is kept at bay while my profits are allowed to run wild. All right, let's wrap this up, man. I've, I've talked for a while, about 16 minutes I'm going on here. So uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up in this uh, email, ryan at sharepointer.com. If you're a subscriber, I'm always in the chat room. I want your questions. I You know, I thrive off of your questions. I like to answer them, okay? So do that. Uh, if you're interested in subscribing, go to sharepointer.com backslash splash zone. Let me say that one more time. Sharepointer.com backslash splash zone. Okay, all one word. I always had to say, <laughs> always had to say always one more word because sometimes my parents will put uh, spaces in their domain names because you know they're they're a little bit older, but they like to. Uh, sometimes they'll go to sharespaceplanner.com. <laughs> So, in any case, I'm not. They're great parents, though. Trust me, man. I've, I'm I'm extremely thankful for them, and and uh, this Christmas season, I'm uh, blessed to have them as parents. All the best to you guys, and and God bless you all, and Merry Christmas.